So we are talking about uh, 3D graphics rendering. 3D computer graphics. What is 3D computer graphics? Computer, you know, 3D, this is three dimensional. And what is graphics? So 3D computer graphics is the science study and method of projecting a mathematical representation of 3D objects onto a 2D image using certain visual tricks such as perspective and shading to simulate the eyes perception of those objects. Now why we are saying that we are trying to represent 3D into 2D because our device, a display device is often 2D. How to show 3D on 2D because you cannot show 3D on 2D. 3D means what our eye sees. Uh, we have two eyes. So because of two eyes and different uh, difference in the position, we are able to uh, have a height perception, height or depth perception. But this is not the case. So what we do, we do certain tricks like perspective, shading, lighting, all this creates a 3D effect. What are the graphics and physics of 3D? 3D graphics software is largely based on uh, simulating physical interaction. Most of the physics are there involved. Generally, we have space relations and light interactions. And in particular cases, the material properties and the object movement. What are the goals or aim of 3D computer graphics? First is visualization, of course, to generate images and usually of certain recognizable subjects that are useful in certain way. But the ideal goal is photorealism, that is to produce images distinguishable from photographs. What are the components of 3D graphic system? In the 3D graphic system, first is 3D modeling. That is a way to describe the 3D world or scene which is composed of mathematical representation of 3D objects. We call them as models, 3D objects or models. Then comes the 3D rendering. So component of 3D graphic system, first is 3D modeling. That is modeling 3D objects using certain mathematical representations. And 3D rendering means it is a mechanism which is responsible for producing 2D image from 3D model. So 3D model to 2D image model to 2D image, this is nothing but the rendering. This is 3D modeling, as we just discussed what was 3D modeling. So simple 3D objects can be modeled using mathematical equations, you know, operating in the three dimensional Cartesian uh, coordinate system. For example, this is this equation x square plus y square plus z square is a model of a perfect sphere with radius r. This is what you see r. Pure mathematical equations to represent 3D objects require a great deal of computing power. Just imagine you are using this for every point. We have a consideration here. We need to consider that the equations which we use will increase the computing power. That is not increase the computer power, but it will require an increased computing power. So it is impractical. Right now it is impractical for real time application such as games or interactive simulations to actually use, use this mathematical formula. So what to do? The alternatives can be polygon models. We are modeling objects by sampling only certain points on the objects. If this is a figure, we are just taking this point, this point, this point, making a triangle, so making a polygon. And all these are the polygons. So modeling objects by sampling only certain points on the objects, retaining no data about the curvature which is, we are not taking anything uh, regarding to the curvature. This is between more efficient but less detailed. Okay? It makes things less computationally expensive. Other alternative, texture mapping. This is a sphere with no texture. This is a blue marble image of our earth, a globe. So this texture image when draped or placed or rounded on the sphere, we get actually 3D or 3D perception. So techniques used to add surface color detail without increasing the complexity of the model. This is, that is an image is mapped to the surface of a model. This is texture mapping. Now how from 3D model to 2D images, that is rendering concept, a 3D world 
a scene is composed of collection of 3D models. So now we have a 3D models right now. So three different coordinate systems or spaces are defined for different model related operations. First is your object space, then you have word space, then you have screen space. First we'll start with the object space. What is, what is an object space? The coordinate system in which a specific 3D object is defined. Say, if I have an object like this, let us consider this is a 3D object. Now, the coordinate system which is defining, in which a specific 3D object is defined is the object space. So, each object usually have its own object space with the origin at the object center. Object center. The object center is the point about which the object is moved or rotated. So, it can be moved, it can be rotated, it can be translated like this. Then we come to the world space. World space is the coordinate system of the 3D world to be rendered. World space is the coordinate system of the complete 3D world, not only the models, there are certain models. Now this is the world space which is, which is the coordinate system of the 3D world to be rendered. The position and the orientation of all the models are defined relative to the center of this world space. The position and the orientation of the virtual camera is also defined relative to the, this is the camera. The position and orientation of the virtual camera is also defined relative to the world space. Then comes the third space, that is the screen space. So 2D space that represents the boundaries of the image to be produced. So now we have an object space, world space, then the image or that part of that image or that part which is to be represented in the image. So many optimization techniques are performed on this screen space. Let us see some mathematics of 3D graphics. 3D operations like translation means the body is here, we can translate, we can rotate, like I can make it like this. And scale, I can scale it, means I can scale it down, scale it up. So these operations are performed using matrices and linear algebra. Each operation is performed by multiplying the 3D vertices. These are 3D vertices. 3D vertices by specific transformation matrix. We have a number of matrices specifically designed or made for these operations. Then comes the 3D rendering. So the process of taking the mathematical model of the world and producing the output image. So the core of the rendering process involves projecting, projecting the 3D models onto the 2D image plane. So there are certain types of rendering algorithms like the various approaches to general approaches are pixel oriented rendering first of all rendering that is 2d 3d to 2d that is 3d model to 2d image first is pixel oriented rendering for example you have ray tracers we also have polygon oriented rendering that is scale line renderers so let us see the ray tracers what is ray tracers it operates by tracing a theoretical light rays as they intersect objects in the scene and the projection plane. So if this is a light source, light reflects from this object or this face of the object, then to this object, then certain reflection, and finally to the 2D, that is eye. So how it is seen to the eye? This is the ray which is being traced. But we have certain ray tracer limitations. What are the limitations? It is processor intensive. A full ray tracer is impractical for real-time applications and it does not take into account inter-reflections of the diffuse light which results in hard shadows like this. Then the other concept is the radiosity. Technique that models the inter-reflections of the diffuse light between the source of the world or environment. See, this is the clean or actual view, realistic view of the inter-reflection of the diffuse light. So it produces more photorealistic illumination and shadows. Then we come to the, first we have seen the pixel base. Now we have the other one that is scanline renderers. So it operates on an object by object basis, directly drawing each polygon on the screen. Each polygon on the screen, object by object. So it requires all objects, including those models with continuous curvature, that is to be tessellated into polygons 
and polygons are eventually tessellated into pixels. First polygon, then tessellations, and then the pixels. This is the illumination for scale line renderers. Lighting and shading is calculated using the normal vector. The color is linearly interpolated across the polygon surface. This is the light as it sees, normal direction, lighting and shading, calculated using normal vector and the color is linearly interpolated means uh, anticipated across the polygon surface. Common shading techniques for scan line renderers, we have flat shading, garoot shading and form shading. First we'll start with flat shading. So the color of the polygon is calculated at the center of the polygon by using the normal vector. So this is the polygon. The color of the polygon is calculated at the center of the polygon by using the normal vector. The complete polygon surface is uniformly lighted then. Uniformly lighted. And then we have Gorod, a Gorod shading. This is a French name. So a normal vector is calculated at each vertex. These are the vertices. So each vertex normal vector is calculated and the color is calculated for each vertex and then interpolated across across the polygon. So now we have not on the center but we have the color which are computed at the vertex and they are now distributed. Then the function. The normal vectors are interpolated across the surface of the polygon like this. These are the normal vectors which are interpolated across the surface of the polygon and the color of each point within the polygon is calculated from its corresponding normal vector. See the results which flat shading gives that is only at what center, only at center and then distributing, groove that is at the vertices and then distributing and the form that is finding the normal at each point then distributing. Then this is the viewing thruster what it means. Segment of the 3D world to be rendered. Segment of a no, 3D world to be rendered because you can you are not able to because of the 3D the world scene is quite large, but there is a segment of that 3D world that is to be rendered, that is to be converted into 2D image. So object outside the viewing frustum or viewing volume are ignored. This is the near clip plane, this is the far clip plane, this is the frustum because actually this whole is the a kind of a, say figure, but this is the part of that frustum. Okay, this is the viewing frustum. So we have x aspect ratio of w by h corresponding to this one. This is the viewing volume. Then we have hidden surface determination. Because not all objects inside the viewing frustum are always visible from the point of view of the camera. Not all polygons of particular object are visible from the point of view of the camera. So what are the techniques to hide those, to not show those and to show only those which are assumed to be seen in reality. So we use the painter's algorithm and the Z buffering or Z buffering, hidden surface determination. What is the painter algorithm? This is polygon oriented. All the polygons are sorted by their depth. All these polygons are sorted by their depth and then displays in this order. Okay. So it's, see, this is this is uh, say some mountains and you have say some water bodies and then you have trees. So these are shown first, then this one, then this one. So according to their depth, they are displayed. All the polygons are sorted by their depth and then they are displayed in that order. What is Z buffering for hidden surface? Uh, this is pixel oriented. Previous one was polygon oriented. This is pixel oriented. So when multiple objects overlap, when multiple objects overlap like this from the point of view of the camera on a particular pixel, only the value of the pixel closest to the camera is used. Only the, only the pixel closest to the camera is used. So this is implemented by saving the depth value of each display pixel in a buffer and comparing the depth of each new overlapping pixel against the value in the buffer. So this is a simple 3D scene and this is the Z buffer representation. Then we come to the projection that is projecting the 3D world to 2D image final of the rendering process. So perspective projection 
In this we have, this is the center of projection, this is an object, and these are the projection lines, and this is our projection plane. So how we can see or project this object on the 2D plane through perspective projection. This is how you view the eyes, you know, how I view the eyes. I view the, I view the objects or human eye using perspective projection only. So this was uh, just a brief idea of 3D uh, graphics or 3D rendering. Thank you so much. Take care.